Good day everyone. My name is Matt and today I will present how my personal view fits in with the theory of constructivism within the classroom. The following presentation will include my personal education beliefs as well as an outline of constructivism including its key factors, the strengths and limits of the theory and how it will be applied in the future classroom. My personal teaching belief is education is an experience and that the journey is just as important as the destination. As teachers, our job is to help students to learn how to discover and create meaning. I am a strong advocate for deep level learning. I do not think that a teacher focused classroom driven by lecturing is the best strategy. I have chosen to discuss the constructivist theory as I believe it is the closest aligning to my own personal philosophy and a framework which I will draw upon in my future classroom. Constructivism is considered to be the most promising model of education. The work of Piaget, Derrida and Foucault all had a major influence on modern constructivism. The concept of constructivism is based upon the theory of learners continually building upon their learning, with students' educational experience coming from the student's exploration and the educator's mission to facilitate this journey. Hartle, Babiska and Smith propose that there are four key concepts to constructivism. They are building on prior knowledge, developing cognitive dissonance, applying new information, and critically reflecting on the process. Educators must elicit prior knowledge, otherwise new knowledge cannot be gainfully learned. Without the prior understanding, new knowledge has less meaning and may be ignored or misinterpreted by the learner. In my future classroom, I will use formative assessment to learn a student's existing body of knowledge. This may include pretests or quizzes, as well as formative interviews to determine where a student is at in the learning process and what the next step is to build upon that. The learner must experience cognitive dissonance to understand the difference between prior and new knowledge. This occurs when children discover that their prior knowledge is not enough to overcome a problem and that adding to that knowledge is required. I intend to challenge students by giving them problems that are beyond their current scope of understanding. I will guide the students to recognise their current level of understanding is not yet sufficient and help them expand upon it until they can manage the new task at hand. It is crucial that children recognise they are building upon the past knowledge and that they understand this process. Once obtained, applying the new information to other problems is critical to developing understanding and meaning. Repetition helps build and perfect the new understanding. I will help my students consolidate their new information by encouraging them to apply it to a variety of new situations. These new challenges allow this child to demonstrate their knowledge and further develop their deep level understanding by using it to solve other problems. Children must engage in metacognition or critical thinking to recognise that learning has occurred. This allows students to take ownership of their learning. To further consolidate this new information, my students will be encouraged to reflect upon the learning experience, and when they didn't have the knowledge, the process they followed to obtain the knowledge they needed, and how they consolidated it. I will encourage my students to write a reflective piece on this process, which they may discuss with neighbouring peers or present to the class, to confirm their understanding and possibly assist other students who haven't quite reached that point. Zane, Razidi and Abidin suggest the use of constructivism allows students to relate the subject matter back to their life creating a greater engagement and facilitating their understanding of the content. One of the major benefits was the social learning occurring in the classroom, a departure from the more traditional personal learning, with the students sharing experiences and knowledge. Another benefit was the alteration in teachers' lesson plans, with the educators altering the lesson to suit the needs of their students, with information being reinforced by peer discussion. Watson suggests that a constructivist approach can help teachers improve their work for students who are identified as having learning disabilities by altering the approach and content to better suit their needs. Meanwhile, students themselves identify the benefits they have taken from a constructivist classroom. These include improvements in critical thinking, taking ownership over one's own learning, developing social skills, and a greater content retention. However, constructivism is not without its criticism. McPhail notes that some potential flaws of constructivism include the potential for teachers to become complacent when it comes to facts, becoming mere educational guides who pale in comparison to a more direct instruction. This is supported by Hattie, 
whose meta-analysis concluded that a major indicator for student achievement was the instruction provided by teachers. Constructivism also requires the child to demonstrate intrinsic motivation. However, external rewards, such as positive reinforcement, have been demonstrated to improve the academic performance. I will use the constructivist framework of utilising prior knowledge to build upon understanding and link concepts, and I'll encourage a vocal student body who will learn socially. However, I intend to provide direction, being more than just a passive guide for the students on this journey. At times, a direct approach is necessary, with classic positive reinforcement used to encourage and reward a student. To conclude, as discussed, my personal philosophy is to facilitate the student's educational journey in line with the constructivist theory. There are four main components of constructivism, building on prior knowledge, developing cognitive dissonance, applying new knowledge, and reflecting on the process. Constructivism strengths create a greater, more personal understanding, especially of students who have learning disabilities. Some students are more responsive to direct instruction. Therefore, a combination of teacher direction and experience-based learning is ideal and my future classroom will fit into the constructivist framework while also having teacher direction to ensure a thorough learning experience. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for your time.